Hi guys, I'm Azure Soul, and today I'll be talking about theories and speculation for Genshin Impact's 2.1 story update, dropping September 1st. Uh, it's 2.1 Floating World Under the Moonlight. Now this is supposed to be the conclusion to the main Inazuma story arc. Now I've been playing since launch, and I've been paying pretty close attention to the story, and I've noticed that I tend to come up with some pretty cool theories and speculations about Genshin's story. So sit down, find something to eat or drink, get comfortable and I ask you to humbly listen <laughs> as I ramble on for a little bit. Now, uh, just one thing before I continue, I would like to say that all music used in this video is from the user more volume. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Spotify. All his links are in the description below. And uh, any gameplay you see that's not from the trailer or anything is a gameplay that I recorded myself. So now without further ado, let's begin. So 2.1 floating world under the moonlight. What's the main thing? The main topic of interest about this is Baal slash A slash the Raiden Shogun. She is the, definitely the main topic we'll be talking about as the main interest of this video, as you can tell from the thumbnail. Um, the Raiden Shogun is definitely an interesting character and her trailer just dropped the other day. I think it was on the 26th or 27th it dropped. And we got to have a look into her past. Now, immediately I identified the Kitsune Saigu, one of the trio that was sitting at the picnic with her, but I was a bit confused about the other two. I was a bit confused about the other two, so I did some research and I actually found in game I had something called the Sangonomia Chronicles, which explained one of the other characters. But for the third one, I had to look on the wiki. Again, shout out, shout out to the Genshin wiki. Um, so we're going to just literally ana just a little analyzation of this trailer real quick, um, just so we have more context what we're talking about. So for who these three people were, spoiler alerts, obviously minor spoiler alerts, obviously for anyone who has not played 2.0. So 500 years ago. These were her closest friends. We've got the first one who disappeared in the video, which is Sasayuri, the Tengu general. And he was a general for her army. Um, but what happened was the serpent god, Orobashi no Mikoto, attacked Inazuma without warning one day. And this led to a civil war between Inazuma and Watasumi Island. And he got popped. <laughs> he got popped. That's what happened. He got popped during the war. And obviously the Shogun, ended up using her sacred move, the Musou no Hitatachi, to finish off the Serpent God, which created the Musoujin Gorge, which is that giant, like, lightning purple lake that is in the middle of Yashiori Island. She cut it in half with her crazy move as she killed him. And that's him. That's basically Sasayuri. He got popped like that. The second one that disappeared was Mikoshi Chio, also known as Toda Chio. Toda meaning tiger. Um, so I'm assuming something to do with tiger there. Now, she was an Oni. And she was also a close ally of the Shogun. However, she was swallowed whole by some like beast of sin during the Cataclysm 500 years ago. Another minor spoiler alert if you're not fully caught up. The Cataclysm is uh, when Kamria, the ancient city of Kamria, fell <laughs> from the heavens. Or I would say from the heavens, but they had a war with the heavens and the city fell and it caused a Cataclysm 500 years ago. Now... What happened was she was absorbed by this beast and she got tainted by the darkness inside of its stomach. Now she eventually cut herself out of its stomach. She ripped it apart and she got out and she killed it. But what happened was Chia was tainted. And due to this taint, uh, what happened was she turned her blade on the Shogun. And obviously they fought, Shogun popped her, but we don't know if she's dead. It has not been officially confirmed. In game or in that trailer, if she's dead, we just know she lost the fight and was gravely injured. So now that's two friends that a, um, we only know this name as well, thanks to this, uh, thanks to the 2.1 trailer. Um, well, at least me, at least I only know the name because of the 2.1 trailer. But A, and now lost two of her closest friends. Now her third friend, the Kitsune Saigu, the Fox High Priestess, the Fox Envoy, whatever you want to call her. Um, during the dark, during a dark disaster, which is likely the Cataclysm 500 years ago, um, she was consumed by a dark will, both her body and her memory. So, but, and, but while she was in this dark will, she ignored and like, she was she was asking it, please spare my memories. Now this ended up getting formed, all her memories got formed into the character we know. And again, spoiler alert, if you haven't done the quest yet, um, is Kazuri. And Kazuri was a kid's name, Mars, short black hair. She is the give quest giver of the Konda village quest. If you haven't done that quest, it is about the sacred sacred cleansing ritual which is a ritual that needs to be performed every X amount of years. I can't remember. And um, we helped uh, Kazuri do all the ritual to clear all the filth. But what had happened was at the end of the ritual, um, Kazuri herself is filth. 
she was the memories the filth memories of the kitsune saigo so we had to pop her in the end but we didn't pop her ourselves she just disappeared because we had finished cleansing um now the most interesting thing about the kitsune saigo remember this these were her last words to a apparently her last words were do not be blinded do not waver and keep walking the path you believe in now that alone is interesting because again we're looking at a and we're thinking about you know or if you add everything together it leads for a very interesting uh, concept which we'll get back to so that's basically that those are her three closest friends all got popped in some way or another unfortunately i really like the design of kitsune saigo i'll be honest so that's a bit upsetting um and it would be cool to see a oni type character later in the story hopefully we see another one since obviously or maybe chio might come back who knows um but anyway we're now going to be talking about uh, the 2.1 trailer so now we've got our summary a bit more about but i'm talking about the 2.1 trailer which is why we're here so the first thing that was mentioned in the trailer was accelerated aging that's interesting that is interesting um alone because it's like hold on what does Baal want she wants eternity she wants inazuma to stay stagnant as it is at least as far as we know that is our understanding of this character so far so that definitely ain't her but then we see Kokomi right after that, allied with Kujo Sara. At least that's what it looks like. They're chilling, talking to each other. And Kokomi mentions that the peace talks are a trap. And it's like, peace talks with who? Maybe Senora, because we find out Senora is a boss. And Paimon says the words, oh, Senora's behind all this. Um, so, uh, one NPC or character in the trailer, we got their voice line. They said Kujo scum, colluding with the Fatui. And it just creates a lot of like, oh, like what is. Is, is this about to be a complete utter shit show like what is this about to be it's, it's really interesting so then after that we get yai yai says now this is the most interesting part for me yai says some ambitions have the power to heal wounds and to bring victory and during that we see kazuha by uh, fending off one of the shogun's attacks he's struggling he's struggling we're going to come back to that um we also, she also says uh, to the protagonist aether or lumine depending on if you play lumine your ambition alone is not enough to shake A's will. And that's an interesting because, oh, at least you do you think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will? My bad. Apologies. And that's interesting because it's like Yaya herself had mentioned her friend who was fatally flawed back in her quest in 2.0. If you've done the main story quest, um, Yaya had mentioned about this character. He had battled with his anxiety. And he slowly descended into the state you see him now and as she said much like a certain fatally flawed friend of mine that's interesting because that's going to bring us back to these key points so my main stuff about this uh, so like basically concluding everything 2.1 2.1 we don't know what's going to happen but we can theorize from all this information we've just gathered first of all my main thing right and uh, this is my main theory. This is just me. <laughs> if the Raiden Shogun loses her Gnosis, and I'm stating this now, I'm calling it. I'm stating this now. If the Raiden Shogun loses her Gnosis in this story, at the end of 2.1, this game is about to be as predictable as, spoiler alert, the anime Akame Ga Kill. <laughs> now, if you've seen Akame Ga Kill, we all know what happens. One by one, they get popped. When the fourth character dies in Akame Ga Kill, when the fourth character dies in Akame Ga Kill, don't lie, we all sat there and was like, okay, so in the end, they were gonna die. And what happened? What happened? Basically, everyone got popped anyway. So my, my theory is if, if Mihoyo drops the ball in 2.1 and makes her lose her Gnosis, it'll feel like everything we just did in 2.0 and I guess 2.1 up until then was nothing. And it, honestly, I am I am claiming it now. The game will not realistically start until we get to Shneznaya. Because the only way she's going to lose her Gnosis is if the Fatui take it. Because that's what they're after, is all the Gnosis, right? They're gathering them for the Saritsa. So if they get all these... If they get all the Gnosises, the game... Or the Gnosis, I don't know what the plural is. The game isn't going to start until Shneznaya. Which means we got to go through like five more regions of BS. <laughs> <laughs> or like four more regions of BS to actually start the story. At least that's my, because my thing is right. With 2.0 Inazuma, it's a way darker story. It's been a way more serious story so far. It's been the best writing they've done so far and setup they've done for a story. 
which is why I'm so excited for 2.1. I'm very, and that's why I wanted to talk about this because I'm very passionate about 2.1 story and where it's going to go, which we'll find out in a couple of days. Um, it's really interesting, man. Like, let me know if you agree with me because that whole theory stems from that we've got four more regions to go through, technically, uh, right? So if she loses her Gnosis, it's just predictable. Like, what's the point of going through these regions? What's the point of even going through them? Because at the end, we know how they're going to end. Lose the Gnosis, lose the Gnosis, lose the Gnosis. Oh, just Naya, we're here. Finally, the story starts because there's they go to the Gnosis. You see, or Gnosis, you see what I'm saying? Like, um, my thing is, right, if she loses it, I'm going to be mad for the main reason, right? Ball has shown that she is about that life. <laughs> now, if you've played 2.0, we've all seen the boss battle where she used a domain expansion like some Jujutsu Mage. Then she has some Tsukuyomi Itachi stuff going on. And it's just like, what the hell? Like, she, she's about that life. We could not touch her. She whooped us in 2.0. <laughs> we had to dip. Toma had to get us the F out of there. So it's very interesting because I'm like, how, how are they going to take a Gnosis from that? You know? How are they going to take a Gnosis from that? So if she loses a Gnosis, I'm calling BS. It'll be for some BS plot armor reason because she does not need to lose it for the main reason that she is powerful. <laughs> but that's where, again, it stands. I'm really interested in knowing what drives her, right? With Baal, what drives her, man? Like we saw all her friends got popped. The last thing the Saigu, Megan, like I said, come back to the Saigu said to her, was do not be blinded, do not waver, keep walking the path that you believe in. So maybe she went, I. I don't want to be lonely no more because if you've seen the bar trailer if you know it she didn't say a single word during the trailer there's one moment where she's like looking back at herself and it, well we don't know if that's her maybe it's um, her mum because from what we know with genshin right it hasn't fully exactly specifically been explained how one ascends to godhood you see what i'm saying so my th my thing is we don't know if that was her or that could have been a, a relative or something but I, i'm pretty sure it was her I'm, I'm just going a bit off the ball now so she's seen chasing what looks like herself what looks to be herself and she doesn't say anything she just stands there after it disappears and she just has this solemn lonely look on her face and then it goes back to yae saying about anxiety so i think what happened was she developed an anxiety that she just doesn't want to lose anything else and that's where the eternity stems from she's like if i can just keep me in the zoom as it is if i do get close to anyone i ain't gonna lose no one that's how it is nothing's gonna happen no one has to go through what i went through i don't have to go through it again eternity that's all i want we need to stay stagnant so that nothing changes nothing has to change so it's very interesting that's that's my take on bar that's what we've got from bar so far slash a slash the shogun very interested to see what happens with her character development um because she's most likely going to have a story quest as well probably separately with her banner um in 2.1 i hope you guys are just as excited for me one more theory before we go my other theory is we're going to get our first potential character death now this goes along with what i was saying earlier at how in 2.0 so far we've seen there's been a darker story a more serious story this is a chance for genshin to now stand out and i think if they're not afraid to kill off characters you know obviously they've been they've shown characters die in past tense you know that's fine whatever that's not the same if they had got the balls to kill off a character if mihoho have got the balls to kill off a character in the present story I think that would really help whoever they kill for other characters' development and would really help Genshin set itself as, yeah, look, we ain't playing no more, man. This is a serious thing. Habit like Inazuma is a serious story arc. And I'll, it would go along with the, the vibes and the tone that they've set so far with the plot building and the development of 2.0 into 2.1 um, and the war and everything. Um, and my other thing is, will it be Kazuha? Now, Yes, we saw Kazuha struggling with the Shogun. That doesn't mean he's going to die. Like, they could have just teased us. But what we did see was his his friend's empty uh, vision. Now, we know he's still got it on him. And the thing Yai said during this, during that in the trailer was, some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, but they also, didn't say also, but I'm just saying, like, you know, they can bring victory, right? So what if Kazuha becomes, you know, what if he awakens his own friend's vision who got popped by her and beats her back and then Scaramouche, Scaramouche, what the hell is Scaramouche up to? The only knowledge we have about Scaramouche is none of the Fatui Harbingers mess with him. They don't like him. They don't like him. Apparently he's the most evil, devious Harbinger or one of the worst ones. No one likes him. Why does no one like him? <laughs> We're going to find out. It's it's crazy. It's, it's, it's really exciting. 
And I just wanted to share that with you today. You know, about is the Raiden Shogun going to lose her Gnosis? Is it going to happen again for a third time and set up a predictable story? Or are they going to do some crazy plot twists and just surprise us all like they did with 2.0 and they surprise us with some stuff? You know, what is going to happen with that? Do you guys think they're going to just going to be a first character uh, death? You know, what do you think? Uh, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed ranting and venting about it and rambling on about it myself, as you can see. And uh, I hope to see you again soon in future videos. Thank you for listening and have a good one, guys.